Well, welcome back. This is the sixth session of our discussion with Senator Tim Scott and Congressman Trey Gowdy on the power of unlikely friendships. In our last session, we talked about how key friendships across divides in our community can be transformative and they can create a brighter future. Well, today we're discussing the next steps. Where do we go from here? And so, Trey, you've convinced me that real and lasting change is going to happen in relationship and that really the key to communities being transformed is one relationship at a time. But where do I go from here? Well, there are two things. Uh, my wife last weekend made me go to a wedding with her. Let me rephrase that. Yeah. My, my wife and I went to a wedding last <laughs> weekend, Better. and it is impossible to go to a wedding without being confronted with a verse from Corinth, uh, Corinthians, uh, these three things remain, faith, hope, and love, the greatest of these is love. And I have long wondered, uh, love wins, I get that, uh, faith and hope must be incredibly important and powerful to even make the final three, to be part of that conversation. So I would tell my friends across the country, have hope. I struggle with it. I am not an optimist by nature. Uh, Tim is. Um, you don't want prosecutors that are all that hopeful and optimistic. Um, but I need to work on it in my own life. I need to be more hopeful. Um, the best piece of concrete advice I can give folks is shock someone this week. Shock a coworker, and say, you know, if I can get tickets to the high school football game Friday night, would you be interested in going? Regardless of whether or not that person is able to go or is interested in going, um, they will be shocked that you did something out of the ordinary. Ask someone that you see on a regular basis, but but maybe don't interact with. I, I Both my kids get coffee every single morning, usually the most expensive uh, kind they can find. <laughs> So you have interactions with people every day. The person that is serving my daughter at the drive-thru, she has an interaction with every day. Um, ask a question that the person's not expecting. Is there something I can do for you today? Is there something I can pray for you about today? Is there something going on in your life? Just do something that surprises the other person. It is so cool and so fun to hear other people's perspectives. Um, I learn a ton, even if it doesn't change my mind, and lots of times it doesn't change my mind. It gives me a better idea of why they are coming from where they are coming from. He and I agree on a lot of, lot of things. My background with law enforcement has been what it's been. I, I've never had a negative encounter with a law enforcement officer. They were witnesses in every trial I ever had. Um, I have an incredibly close relationship with most of the law enforcement officers in my district. He also values law enforcement, but his experience with them has been very different. I need to hear his experience. I didn't mean I'm going to change my perspective on it, but I need his perspective. I need his life experience. It's going to round out my own perspective it's also going to give me another way of looking at it. Um, you don't get that unless you surround yourself sometimes with people who don't agree with you on every single issue. I'm a big fan of the aftermath mentality. We are so good at treating each other like individuals and humans after a crisis. Think D-Day, think 9-11, the 1,000 year flood in South Carolina. Neighbors were helping neighbors. We were knocking on doors looking for things that you might need. 9-11 brought our country together. There's this aftermath mentality that happens after a crisis. I, I would encourage us to create the aftermath mentality without a crisis. Maybe we'll avoid future crisis if we will act like the family, the American family that we are without there having to be a crisis to, to ignite that conversation. It is amazing to watch when something negative occurs and it impacts everyone, how all of us sees each of us as individuals and in someone in need of a hug, in need of help, in need of something that I might be able to provide. I am so proud of who we are after a crisis. I think we can be that person before the crisis as well. So I would encourage us to have the after 
crisis, the aftermath mentality. You know, Trey talked earlier about faith, hope, and love. And as we think about this series, challenging us to all be a part of, what's your hope? What, what do you hope happens as a result of us taking this challenge together? I look back at the end of the series, after the end of a couple of years, I hope that our nation is the beacon of light for the world to see. And I hope that our nation is that beacon of light because the church has found ways to come together and represent the true meaning of the body of Christ, different parts without any question, different likes, different passions, different perspectives, but all woven together by the thread of love, this unconditional acceptance for each other so that we might share the gospel in ways without words every place we go and everyone we come in contact. I will believe until I draw my last breath that if you take the time, you will see that you have more in common with most other people of good conscience than you do not have in common with them. Why we run towards the uncommonality, um, I, I, I will never fully understand why, why we run towards those things that we don't agree on, skipping over all the things that we do. I spent, I guess, almost 17 years interviewing um, defendants, interviewing young people who made really terrible decisions and they found themselves in bad circumstances. But, but you build a rapport, even with the folks that you're interviewing. I was stunned at how many of those young men wanted the same thing my own son wanted out of life. If a prosecutor can look past the orange jumpsuit, past the drug offense, and see the outline of his own son, um, I think lots of people can do it, and they're willing to do it, they want to do it. Uh, just got to take the first step. Maybe that's the, the end then. Take the first step. Do something that may feel uncomfortable, but do it realizing that you may be not only changing your life, but opening the door for someone else to change theirs.